Hello and welcome. The intention of this material is to raise the quality of communication for your real estate sales talk, to bring powerful communication to your business conversations. Everything you do is centered around communication. The elevation of our very existence is rooted from the very beginning from our ability to communicate. The quality of our lives is directly related to the quality of our communication, first with ourselves and then with others around us. Everything you do depends on communication and real estate is a tremendous platform to enhance this very skill. Your success in real estate, regardless of where your leads come from, will be directly contingent on just how well you speak real estate. You speak English, many of you speak other languages, but how fluent can you become in speaking the language of real estate? Not just the terms, knowledge, and understanding because you passed a real estate exam. I'm talking about real conversations, the initial interactions with people to get them to trust you to open their door, conversations rooted in helping them understand a consultation can provide them what they're looking for. The quality of communication will put more people into contract. It'll hold deals together and bring referrals for years to come. Welcome to the power of communication. Welcome to Real Estate Sales Talk. The following material will give you the insight you need to better understand the scripts. Listen to examples on what good delivery of the scripts really sounds like. Sample how to handle objections in many formats and you'll hear role play on live interaction as it would really happen in different scenarios. Finally, the mindset you'll need to go into the world as a confident business person, ready to help the people that really want it. Let's get started. I'm alive, excited, and full of energy. The phone makes me money. I am versatile. I listen for motivation. Objections are an opportunity. I always ask great questions. I have a powerful attitude. I see myself achieving my goals. People need my help. My service changes lives. I am a powerful communicator. I bring value to every call. My mindset is strong all day long. Yes. Understanding the just listed, just sold conversation. This script is really the easiest to engage. You can use it in a social or a business setting when meeting somebody new at a barbecue. It's really versatile enough to use almost anywhere, anytime, any place. When it's used on a phone call, they're not expecting your call. So you don't have the drama and emotions tied up when you're calling expireds, withdrawns, or for sale by owners. The challenge is making sure that you're engaging so that when you do reach a motivated prospect, they'll answer honestly. Reflex no's will still always occur, so building rapport and asking, asking questions on how long they've lived there, how they chose the area, where they're from, will result in them being more honest about where they would move if they could go somewhere next. Keep in mind, it doesn't matter what they say in the beginning of the conversation, whether it's they've just bought a home, they'll stay there until they die or whatever. If you create a great conversation and you're doing that second by second, co-creating the experience, they'll reveal later on down the road that actually there still is a home to sell. They were thinking about buying investment property. There's someone in the family that's been talking real estate. You will have earned the right for them to be honest with you. You will be speaking fluent real estate. Let's take a look at the four parts that really make up a great just listed, just sold conversation. First, speak with familiarity. Say your name like you know them. Say your name like they should know you. Think about it. You're home, enjoying yourself, and the phone rings. It's a salesperson. They give you a half-hearted pitch on their product. Their tonality makes you want to jump off a bridge. Remember, you've been there. Now think about this. Same scenario. But the person on the other end of the call sounds friendly. They're fluid. They're comfortable. They're confident. They sound like they know you. And you're talking, and they're talking to you like you should know them. The conversation's natural. Speak with familiarity. It'll create rapport immediately. Second, say the name with company pride. Too often I'm hearing agents run through the company name and that run through is running right into stale and flat tonality, which only gets worse by the second. You chose this company for a reason. The company has pride and value. Say it like you mean it. You're co-creating that experience, remember, because they can't look you in the eye. They can't see your facial expressions or your body language. They can't see that you're dressed professionally. 
Being intentional with your tonality is critical to create an experience that's contagious with energy. If you don't believe and project the value of your service, how can they ever believe it? Say the name with company pride. Third, deliver the good news. Well, now that you have momentum, don't stop there. A property just listed or sold is great news. There's always a grumpy person or two, but the bottom line is a property recently, recently sold or listed means new updates on the value for their home. This is extremely important to them. If it wasn't internet websites claiming value or people looking up value would not be important. Make sure you carry heavy infliction through the criteria of the home you're talking about. And most importantly, the price. Even if it's a small amount, it's still a lot of money. These are the most valuable assets for most people. Don't minimize the value of the information you bring. It's important. Deliver that good news. Well, now that you've gotten through the first few parts of the beginning of the conversation, we're moving to the transition. And the transition is moving into the rapport questions that'll allow you to discover if this is a prospect or a suspect. And the transition is the portion where you don't really want to lose momentum. As soon as you get to that reflexive, no, we're not interested. No, we don't know anybody. Express genuine gratitude for them answering your questions. Really do it well. Keep in mind, you're only talking to about 10 to 20 percent and 10 to 20 percent of the people that you call. So uh, you're lucky you're even talking to anybody. The fact that you're talking to a decision making adult who's conversing with you and that has a heartbeat should be exciting. Transition that gratitude into your ability to jump into rapport quickly. How long have they been, been there? Where did they move from? How do they choose the area? You can use these questions in almost any scenario, including the people that you know and you love, to lead into a, a real estate conversation. Now you will have earned the right to get an honest answer. Now, when you ask if they could move, where would they go next? Their answer is sincere. And even if it's still, no, I'm not interested, I will know it's real and it's okay. It's okay that I know I have a suspect and not a prospect. It's okay that prospecting and talking to a lot of people is part of my job, but I can live with the fact that I'm asking really good questions. I'm asking them well, and I'm listening carefully. I'm repeating and approving at a very high level, and I'm speaking fluent real estate so that when I'm talking to a motivated prospect, I get an opportunity to have a real conversation and most importantly, to help them. The just listed script. Hi, Bob. Hey, Bob, it's Paul. I'm a real estate agent with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. I just listed a home for sale over on Primrose Street, four bedrooms and three baths. It's listed for $350,000. And I was wondering, who do you know that'd like to move into our area? No one. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to think about it, Bob. Are you still over on Primrose Street yourself? You are, excellent. How long have you been at this home? Three years, wow, that's a short time. Where did you move from? Chicago, well, that's a lot different than a year. How did you happen to pick this area? Yeah, the schools and the parks, it's a great area. So if you were to move, where would you go next? Florida, well, that's exciting. When would that be? Next couple of months, fantastic. Just sold script. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob, my name is Paul with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. I just sold a home on Primrose Street, three bedrooms and two baths, and it's sold for $350,000. We know when someone sells a home, usually two more sell right away. So I was wondering, who do you know thinking of moving? No one. I really appreciate you taking the time to think about it. Are you still over on Primrose Street? Excellent. How long have you been at this home? 10 years. Wow, that's a long time. Where did you move from? Chicago. Well, that's a lot different than here. How did you happen to pick this area? The schools. That's great. If you were to move, where would you go next? Florida. Well, that's exciting. And when would that be? In the next couple of months, fantastic. Moving forward, if they say they may be interested in three months or less. Well, obviously you could realize it could take one to three months in this market to get a home sold. Did you know that? Terrific. So my question is, do you have to be sold in the next one to three months or do you wanna start selling at that time? Wonderful. Well, fortunately to get you one step closer, 
All we need to do now is simply set an appointment so I can help you get what you want in the time that you want. Won't that be great? Fantastic. Which would be better for you, Monday or Tuesday at 4? Hello, Rob? Yes. Hi, Rob. This is Paul. I'm an agent with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. Hey, Rob, I just oh, listed a home. Yeah, I just listed a home for sale over on Rogers Drive. It has three bedrooms and two baths, and it was listed for $350,000. And I was wondering, wow. yeah, I was wondering who do you know that'd like to move into our area? Where's the house at? Uh, right at the corner of Rogers Drive and Lyle Avenue. Mm. Yeah. Where, like just west of me or what? It's actually just a little bit east of you. And I was wondering who you know that would like to move into the area. Mm. You know what? I don't know anybody right now. Um, mm. Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's okay. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to think about it. Are you still over on Primrose Street? I am. Oh, nice. How long have you been there? Mm, since I uh, bought in 2009. 2009. Wow. Okay. Well, that's yeah. not too long. Where did you move from? Um, I'm, well, I'm just down the street. I'm just the other part of Henderson. Oh, okay. So you just moved from the same part of Henderson. So was it an upgrade or a downsize? Yeah, I was renting before, so I was just over the next. I moved into Legacy. It was over uh, just over in the next neighborhood over there. Great. So it was an upgrade. Yeah, yeah, I was renting, and then that's my first home. Wow, good for you. So, Rob, if you were to move, where would you go next? If I were to move, well, I mean, probably Cali is the next stop. Southern California. Wow. That okay. That's a lot different than Vegas. And when would that be? Um, you know, we actually had plans to go out this summer, but things change, and now you know, maybe next year, mm -hmm. year after that. I, I don't know though. Plans? Uh, you wanted to be out there this summer? Yeah, yeah, we were planning on it, and then, uh, you know, we were just waiting on something, and that came through. But now, you know, the school year's already started again, and so mm -hmm. then we just then kind of put the plans on hold. Wow. So uh, at this point, the the plans were on hold. But if you had a good offer, and of course it made sense financially, uh, would that be something you took a look at? For my house, right? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, how much do you say the other one sold for? Uh, well, that one we just listed it uh, for three hundred and fifty. Yeah, three hundred and fifty thousand. But there were there were a couple other sales recently in the area. Well, why don't we do this? I, we can sit down and take a look at the, the information, uh, hash it out a little bit, and if it makes sense, maybe we can uh, take a look at uh, putting you on track to being moved to Southern California. What part of Southern California were you going to? I was going to San Diego. San Diego. Wow. Okay. So yeah. what's, uh, what's bringing you to San Diego? Uh, well, I have uh, I actually just sold my hair salon here, and then I've always I've had another one there um, oh. for a long time. So, yeah, okay. we're, just, we're going to go be there, closer there. And, okay. You know, we've kind of been running it remotely, so we still, do that. we still have that option, but it would be better to just get there, get boots on the ground, and actually run it from there. Um, wow. Okay, so job opportunity. How's your family feel about that? Well, I mean, my wife wants to get out of Vegas, so preferably mm -hmm. I could get out of Vegas. But um, mm -hmm. but you mentioned school. You have kids? Yeah, yeah, we got kids. We registered in school, and um, right. Right. that's why we we're going to possibly look again next year. Right. Well, I can understand that, but you you'd already sold the salon here in, in Las Vegas. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So I'm actually driving out to San Diego, like two or three times a month. Wow. Okay. So you're driving out there a couple, that's got to be uh, quite a task to be, have to keep going out there. So at yeah. this, at this point, if the, again, if it made sense financially, uh, even though with the kids having to deal with the kids in school, I mean, let's say the property did sell you, you, uh, you got a great offer, the property sold in the last, in the next 60 days. Um, how would you go about dealing with the kids and, and transferring school? We, can, we can actually transfer them after Christmas break. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, okay. transfer them. Um, okay. So there's a window for us actually coming up that if, 
we did we're, we're able to sell. We just haven't put it all together or any of that. And I've actually got a friend in the business that's been, you know, that I've been meaning to call and kind of talk to about it. And so he knows what's going on. And sure, sure. So that, you know, so if I if, if I did sell, I'd probably give him a call. I just haven't gotten around to it. No, I understand. And listen, I respect you know an agent. Uh, let me ask you an honest question. Uh, this is this would be a pretty big deal, right? I mean, you're with the size of property you have, you know, you're you're somewhere in the 300, maybe closer to four hundred thousand dollars. That's a pretty big deal, right? Of course, yeah. It's a yeah. Big asset for me. Right. So, how important would it be to make sure you got the highest price possible? Very important. I mean, I don't want to sell for peanuts. I mean, I like hearing those numbers you just talked about. Yeah. Well, and listen, I understand that you're not going to do anything unless it makes sense for you, right? Of course, yeah. Okay. All right. So when we meet, we'll go over the information you need, and then you'll figure out what's best for you, whether it's uh, considering your friend or whether there's something I have to bring to the table to get you to San Diego. Because you said you had a little bit of a window here opening up uh, in the winter, right? Yeah, yeah. Essentially, you know, at the end of Christmas break, we can transfer a kid. Sure. And, you know, there's no the, – the schools would allow it, and there's no disruption, and they don't have to mm-hmm. transfer in the middle of the semester. Right. And you know what? Obviously, with this big of a deal, I mean, several hundred thousand dollars and the strategy of getting you there. Did, did you have some place in San Diego already or were you looking to purchase? Something? Yeah, we have a rental that I use, uh, the, you know, the family uses when we're out there. And that's actually what I stay in when I go out. A few times okay. A month. So, so you already got a place there. OK, so you'd ease into that or you, you, um, you'd consider buying something within the winter or the early, early spring? <laughs> Uh, buying something where here in San Diego. In San Diego, in San Diego. Oh, uh, we're, we're going to rent for a few years before. I mean, houses are so much there that sure. You know, and and we're we're not sure if we're going to open up another salon somewhere else. But you know, with California prices being so high, we just rent there. So we're already we're basically already set there. Great. Well, listen, I'm excited to meet you. Well, let's sit down and talk about it a little bit more. We'll hash through the information that uh, might put you on track, or or at least would be considerable for you and your wife to figure out if the timing made sense this winter. Because, uh, I mean, let, let's just say the property did sell. It was a good price. You were able to take advantage of the timing in the winter time. Um, then that's something you'd seriously consider, right? Yeah, yeah. If it made sense, I'd consider it. Okay, great. Well, uh, w- let's do this. Uh, does When you and your wife are home together, uh, does Tuesday at 4 or Wednesday at 6 work better for you guys if you were home together? Uh, Tuesday, we're running the kids around, so yeah, Wednesday would be better. Okay, listen, I'll have a, a package delivered to your doorstep, and you guys can take a, a, a closer look at some of the new market information and some of the stuff that we're going over, and then that way, uh, that way, our, you know, we don't spend too long. It'll only be about 20 or 30 minutes for our, our consultation to figure out how I might be able to help you and if this is the right step for you guys. So can you promise me to take a look at that, Rob? Yeah, I'll take a, uh, you know, you said you can have it delivered? Yeah, well, I'll have it delivered. I'll call you on Monday just to confirm our appointment, and then we'll go okay. from there, okay? Okay, perfect. Great. I appreciate your time, Rob. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Mike. All right, bye. bye-bye. Understanding for sale by owners. Remember, a high percentage of for sale by owners will list with real estate agents. So keep in mind, using the scripts as a way to keep them engaged and talking about their situation will extract their true motivation while asking great questions on your intention to find a buyer if possible. Don't get caught in the mindset you have to preview first or that they're not going to list right away. Now, it's true for sale by owners typically take longer to track and sign, but if you're talking to a for sale by owner who's truly motivated and sensible, they'll consider your services sooner than later. Plus, by putting it out in front that you're interested in helping, but that considering how you might have more features and benefits to your service to get the highest price possible, your future pacing them to sit down and talk about it. Previews are fine as long as you've you've used the scripts to, to identify real motivation. When you think that you have motivation, think about how well you really understand that motivation to ask more questions to get to the root of it. Remember, situation plus motivation equals a good conversation. Use the motivation script to dig deeper before you run out to talk to someone who's really never going to list with anyone or be reasonably priced. The alternative for sale by owner script. Hi, I'm calling about the property for sale. Is it still available? Great. My name is Paul. I'm a real estate agent. And I was wondering if you were cooperating with agents who bring buyers. You are excellent. 
I'm sorry. My name again is Paul. What's your name? Bob. Great, Bob. It's important for me to know about all the homes for sale. So we have you on a list of available properties. You're not on the MLS yet, are you? Great. What's your current asking price? 315000 How did you come to that price? Looking around the internet. Great. Is there any room for negotiating that price with a buyer? Within reason? Fantastic. To show the property to a buyer. Do you still live there? Is it rented or vacant? Vacant, I understand. Now in a perfect world, Bob, what's your ideal time frame to be sold? Within the next couple months, I see. When the property sells, where are you moving to next? Texas. Wow, what's bringing you to Texas? Job transfer. What happens if you don't sell your property? You're gonna to need to sell it, I understand. But why did you decide to sell yourself rather than hire a professional to get the highest price possible? Save the money, I can appreciate that. Putting the most money in your pocket is obviously your main goal, correct? Right, I know this sounds crazy, but if I can get your home sold for more money than you can selling on your own, looking at how it makes sense, that's not unreasonable, is it? Great, well, Bob, an aggressive agent like myself can net for sale by owners like you thousands of dollars more than selling it on your own. Which days work better for you, Tuesday at four or Wednesday at six? For sale by owner, objection handlers continued. FISBO 101, what's really more important to you, selling on your own or selling for the highest price possible? FISBO 102, we both know it's possible to sell on your own, right? We've helped for sale by owners just like you, make more money even after commissions. Bob, we both know it's about more visibility for more buyers. More buyers means more demand. More demand means a higher price. Do you wanna meet Tuesday at four or Wednesday at four? Power close. I understand. You're looking to save the cost of hiring an agent, right? Bob, when we're looking at new information, you'll decide to keep trying on your own, which is fine with me. Or there might be an opportunity to use a professional for legal protection and for saving thousands of dollars in negotiations. Bob, you're not going to do anything unless it makes sense for you, right? Exactly. You want to meet Monday or Tuesday at four? For sale by owner, buyer close. Have you gotten a lot of realtor calls so far? Right, I can imagine. There are really three types of calls coming in on a for sale by owner. Realtors, I'm sure you've had a bunch of those calls already, right? Of course. They know 98% of for sale by owners end up listing their home with an agent for the highest price possible. And then you have the lowball investors. They're the buyers that want the garage sale price instead of the retail price. Have you had any of those yet? I know. You don't plan on giving your home away, do you? Exactly. The last group's unqualified buyers. Most qualified buyers work with realtors because it saves them time and money to get access to the most variety of homes. What you end up with is wishful thinkers who waste your time getting the grand tour of your home. That's not what you want, is it? Bob, when we get together, we'll go over exactly how you can avoid garage sale and got, get top retail dollar because that's what you want. You want to meet Tuesday or Wednesday at four? Preview close. Let's see here. I'm looking at my calendar and I'm going to be in the area this week, I can stop by and take a look at your home just in case I end up with a buyer looking for property like yours. And listen, Bob, when we meet, I'll know if one of the buyers we currently are working with might be interested now to make an offer. Would that be a problem? No, I didn't think so. And, and while I'm there, I'll leave you some new market information and share with you exactly how I can get you the highest price possible. And then you can decide if you want me to help you sell. Either way is fine with me. I don't mind. You want to do Tuesday or Wednesday at four? Alternative for sale by owner script. Hello? Hello, I'm calling about the property for sale. Is it still available? Yeah, yeah, it's still available. Are you a real estate agent? Great, yeah, my name is Paul. I am a real estate agent, and I was wondering if you're cooperating with agents who bring buyers. Yeah, I mean, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll think about that. We're gonna offer 3%, so. 3%? Yeah, Excellent. Yeah, yeah well, that's how I was calling. Uh, I'm sorry again, my name is Paul. What's your name? My name is Dan. 
Uh, but yeah, yeah we'll, uh, we'll, we'll offer a 3% if you have someone that's interested. I mean, do you have someone right now? Perfect. Yeah, well, Dan, it, it is important for me to know about all the homes for sale. So I have you on the list of available properties. You're not on the MLS yet, are you? No, 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 no. We're not on the MLS. We're okay. not going to be listing, so. I got gotcha. you. Okay, perfect. Well, yeah, great. Then now I have you on my for sale, my owner board here. What's your current asking price? Uh, it's listed at 260 260. Okay, I'll write that down here. Okay, how'd you happen to come to, to 260,000? Just out of curiosity. Uh, I don't know. We kind of just looked online and found some stuff. Why do you, you guys all seem to ask that. Why do you guys yeah. ask that? What, how we come up with it? Oh, uh, just to get an idea if that maybe you had a previous appraisal done or if there was uh, there was something oh, done. No. Yeah. yeah, no, we haven't had an appraisal recently. Okay, yeah, well, just out of, again, out of curiosity to see where you were at. So with 260000 is there any uh, wiggle room for negotiating the price with a buyer? Yeah, a little bit, not too much, you know. Okay. Uh, we can't really, yeah, we can't Great. give it away. But. Yeah, well, I certainly you don't want to do that, Dan. To show the property to a buyer, do you still live there then, or is it rented or vacant? How would that happen? No, no, it's vacant. So okay. we just had the tenants move out about, let's see here, two weeks ago. Wow. So anytime okay. you want to bring someone by, just give me a call two hours before. Great. Yeah. Well, that's well, exactly yeah. why I'm calling. So in a perfect world, what's the ideal time frame to be sold? Uh, I don't know. I mean, sometimes soon, but it doesn't really have to be. I mean, we can mm -hmm. always rent it out again. Right. But, you know, soon will be good. Right. <laughs> Sooner the better, right? So if we have a cash deal and it's a two-week closing, then that, that's not a problem for you, right? Yeah, I mean, 260 or even 255, I think that today. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So what happens if the home doesn't sell, Dan? Um, I mean, yeah, we probably rent it out again. Mm -hmm. We've well, rented it for a year, and we could probably find someone else to put in there. So. Right, you said you had it rented for a year, so obviously that was something you weren't excited to go back to. Was that, was that a good experience or not as good experience, or how did that go for the rental? Uh, I mean, it was it was not terrible, but they definitely right. put wear and tear on the house, and sure, a little bit of a headache sometimes when it comes to maintenance. I mean, the house is a fool, so you know, I got to right. make sure everything's up to date in there and everything. So yeah, yeah, it wasn't the best. It was a little bit of a headache, and uh, but I mean, we could do it, right? So, but, I understand. I understand. So Dan, I, uh, maybe I know the answer to this already, but why did you decide to sell yourself? rather than hire a professional to get the highest price possible? Uh, well, I don't know. I, I, you think you could get a higher price? I don't really know how that would be the case if we, uh, how would that be the case if you're charging a commission? I mean, we're sure. basically going to save the 3%. Yeah, and you know what? I, I, I help a lot of for sale by owners just like you in your situation. And typically, Dan, putting, you know, putting the most amount of money in your pocket, obviously that, that's a pretty big goal, right, when you first started out. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the reason why we uh, figured we would try it, see sure. what we can do, and there's really no reason to not try it, at least. I mean, yeah. we don't have, to have it sold today, so there's really no reason to not give it a shot and then see if someone walks in here, and if they don't, then we'll uh, we'll probably consider listing it in about a month, if not, mm -hmm. but, you mm -hmm. know, we'll give it a shot. Yeah, and you know what? I might feel the same way if I were in your shoes, so maybe this sounds crazy, but if I could get more for your home sold than you could selling on your own, taking a look at how that made sense in regards, in regards to putting more money in your pocket. That's not really unreasonable, is it? No, but everyone's been saying that. It just doesn't make much sense. How, how is that going to be the case? I mean, that's what everyone says. So. Yeah, well, I, I can appreciate that because at this point, you know, a lot of realtors are saying the same thing to kind of get their foot in the door. And, and at this point, it's just a matter of putting more money in your pocket, right? And at the same time, you don't want to leave out the possibility that, um, you know, something could happen on your own, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You want to right. keep that option open. Great. So let's do this. I'll, I'll pop in. I'll take a look at the property, okay? And uh, let's see. I'll be, I'll be in that area tomorrow around 4. Um, I can uh, stop by and take a look at the property or the following evening at 6. Uh, and, and just in case I, I end up with a buyer looking for the property like yours, maybe we can put a deal together, right? Yeah, Is that possible? Good. Okay, yeah. good. Well, listen, when we meet, I'll know if one of the buyers we're currently working with might be interested now to make an offer, and you said we'd be able to, to work something out in regards to commission on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, Dan, so while I'm there, I'll leave you some new market information in regards to how I might be able to get you the highest price possible 
if we're unable to work anything out together as a buyer. And of course, if, if it doesn't work out in regards to you selling the property. And then you can decide if you would want me to help you sell the property uh, in regards to hiring me, get you the highest price possible. Listen, either way is fine with me, Dan. I don't mind. But when you take a look at that information, you'll decide what's best for you because you're not going to do anything unless it makes sense for you, right? Yeah, that's true. Okay. So uh, do you want to do tomorrow at 4 or does the following day at 6 work better? Uh, tomorrow's fine. If you want to stop by tomorrow, yeah, just give me a call a couple hours ahead of time and we can, uh, we can work that out. Okay, great. Well, I'll do this. Uh, I can send you some information today delivered to your door, and uh, it'll have some new market information in regards to what, what, the, uh, uh, what some of the recent sales have been just over the last week. And then you can figure out uh, there some of the additional information on, on what I do to get home sold. And then can you make sure to take a look at that? Because there's some really important information there. Yeah, I'll take a look, but I mean, I'm not going to sign anything. We got to, uh, like I said, we're going to try it on our own and we'll see what happens. If it doesn't work out at that point, we might, you know, we'll reconsider it, but we're not signing anything. Uh, I, I, com I Listen, Dan, I completely respect that because you're not going to do anything unless it makes sense for you. And what we'll be able to do is when we take a look at that information and take a look at what I can bring to the table in regards to getting you the highest price possible, you know, you guys can decide from there what you want to do. So uh, I'll send you that information today. I'll call you in the morning just to confirm uh, tomorrow at 6 o'clock still works. And uh, and I'm excited to meet you and your wife. All right. Excellent. Th thanks so much for your time, Dan. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Right, Understanding expired and withdrawn listings. Think about it. You're an expired or withdrawn listing. Suddenly you're off the market. Likely your agent hasn't been doing a very good job. And now you're getting dozens of calls telling you you're off the market and asking when you're going to hire the right agent for the job of selling your home. You'd be pretty upset too. You wouldn't want to talk to anyone. But beyond that emotion, beyond the drama, are motivated prospects who really do have to sell. But are you earning the right for them to tell you the truth? Too often I'm listening to agents prospect for business, ask only a few questions, not asking them well, and then expecting the prospects to roll over and give up the truth. They don't know you. They don't even like you at this point. And you expect them to set an appointment? You have to earn it. You have to repeat and approve well, moving through the next question, moving through the initial resistance. Repeating and approving is the key to raising the quality of your communication. This is the one thing that, if done well, can bring you more opportunities. Repeating, approving, and moving on to the next question. Your ability to repeat so they can feel heard approve or acknowledge in some way their position will transition to you tuning into their frequency so you can do what needs to be done next ask a good question and ask it well but we're begging we're asking a question maybe two and when we're rejected asking if they know someone else we haven't earned it the three most important rules of selling are listening well asking great questions and asking those questions really well Think about how well you're really doing that. Think about how well you're really speaking real estate. You want to help people, right? Most times that's in spite of themselves, the expired or withdrawn listing, so we can make that connection and move through the initial reflex no. Move through a second or third level no of discomfort, insecurity, or fear of being sold or committing to an appointment. To connect with this group, you have to remember you're there to help and that you're going to communicate at a high level to make that connection and really earn the right after continuing to ask great questions and ask them well to find out who really does still need help. And in the end, they'll appreciate it and they'll respect you. Alternative expired or withdrawn script also available to use on old expired and withdrawns. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. It's Paul. I'm a local realtor. I specialize in properties that come off the market. Have you sold the home on Primrose Street or were you still the owner? Great. I was wondering if you were still considering to sell. Excellent. Did you get any offers at all at 350000 Really? Why did your last agent say it didn't sell? That's interesting. How did you happen to pick that last agent anyways? Someone who mailed you stuff. Well, wow, so what do you think should have been done to sell your home? I agree. This is a great area. Where are you going to next? 
Wow, Florida, what's bringing you there? Job transfer. Wow, so how soon did you have to be in Florida? I understand. Well, what we expect from the next agent you choose? Very good. And if you had new information and it could cause your home to sell now, would you consider it? Great. What time works best for you? Monday or Tuesday at four? Expired listing call. Hello. Hello, Dan. Yeah. Hey, Dan, this is Paul. I'm a local realtor. I specialize in properties coming off the market. Have you sold the home on Rogers Drive or were you still the owner? Oh, no. Another call from about, no, we didn't sell yeah. it yet. We're, uh, we need a little bit of time to think about it. We'll, I got you. We're getting tons of calls this morning. So I know. I we'll know. We'll give you this call back in a few days. We just got to, we're going to think about it a little bit. So. Okay. So you're going to take a little bit of time to think about it. Yeah. I was wondering if you would still consider to sell. Uh, yeah, we, we're still considering it, but just not mm -hmm. right now. We, uh, we're getting killed with calls today. Yeah. Sure, so. My gosh, that's got to be frustrating. You, by chance, Dan, did you get any offers at all at 350000 uh, not at 350. No, we got two offers. They're both pretty low. So really, uh, two offers. Yeah we, yeah, we got two. One was at 330. One was at 335, and uh -huh. it just wasn't enough for us. So, huh. so why did your last agent say it didn't sell? I mean, how come we couldn't put it together? Uh, I mean, it's just too low. We're not going to do uh -huh. it that much. We're not going to get the house away. So right. Well, yeah. obviously, you shouldn't have to give the house away. That, that's for sure. How did you happen to pick that last agent? Uh, someone my wife knew. Okay, so it wasn't a personal friend. It was just somebody from referred to her, or she, it was actually somebody she did know. Uh, I actually don't even know. I know I don't know if they were friends a while back. I just know that she's mm. known first, so I don't know if they worked together or something or what. But hmm. yeah, she knew him. She said he was good, and I don't know. She seemed to be all about him. But to be honest, yeah. I, don't, I don't really know if he did a great job or put a lot of work into it. But well, I mean, know. yeah, the home didn't sell, and at this point, you had a couple offers, so it sounded like you were in the ballpark there. What do you think should have been done to get the, the uh, home sold? I don't know. Why don't, give us a call back. We need to. We're it's kind of a bad time for us right now. So yeah, no, we that, really need to think about it a little bit. Yeah, and then we'll we're going to decide who to call back here. So. Perfect. I completely respect that, Dan. So just out of curiosity, this is a great area. Do you, where are you guys headed next? Uh, well, we're moving to Atlanta in about two months here. Atlanta in two months? Oh my gosh! What's bringing you to Atlanta? Uh, well, I'm getting a job transfer actually out there, and my wife uh, she can basically work from anywhere, and she's been wanting to get out of Vegas for a while, so it was wow. a good opportunity for us to go. Great. So Atlanta, geez, now there's less time here with the property not selling this first time around. Did you want to be in Atlanta in the next couple months, or you're planning to leave at that time? Oh uh, no, we'll definitely be there. It's yeah, we'll definitely be there in two months. We don't, I have to be there for work, so. Okay, so you're leaving, like, what, in the next 30 days or 45 days? Yeah, probably right around, I don't know, a month from now. Yeah. 40 days. But, yeah, like I said, we it's something we got to think about. It's, it's yeah. been kind of tough for us, and I know she's just really, really upset about it. And, sure. You know, and that's understandable, Dan. I mean, you guys were on the market. You were pretty close. You had some offers, but for some reason the agent couldn't, couldn't put it together. And now with the time frame, Obviously, it's important in regards to getting the right agent. What would you expect from the next agent you choose? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess, I don't know. What do you think of the price? Is it a problem with the price? I don't under, I don't really know what happened either. Well, that, that's a good question. I'm sure when we meet, there's some new information that I can bring to the table that will cause your home to sell. Uh, you consider looking at that, right? Yeah, we'd look at it, but like I said, we're going to look at what everyone has to say, and then we'll end up choosing someone. So okay, perfect. Um, we have to. If you want to send us an email with your information, we're going to get emails from a bunch of agents, and then we'll decide. Yeah. You know, what the best fit is. Well, why don't I do this? I can I can do a little bit better than that. I'll send you a hand delivered package today in regards to uh, what it'll take to get the property sold. Do you mind taking a look at that? No. No. That's okay. Idea. Great, and then why don't you do this? I'm sure uh, you and your wife are home usually after four or five, or when are you guys usually home together? Uh, I'm home in and out all the time. She gets home a little bit later in the day. So okay. Probably around four or five, yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll send you that information. Take a look at it. There's some, some brand new information there from our company uh, who specializes in properties like this. You guys take a look at that. Talk to your wife. Why don't we tentatively schedule something 
for tomorrow at six. I can pop in, take a look at the property, and then uh, address any questions or concerns you guys have about the information. And then you guys aren't going to do anything unless it makes sense for you, right? No, but I mean, what are you going to do that's any different? That's the reason why we need to look at this because, I mean, how are you going to do anything different from the last guy? Right. Well, that's exactly why we need to meet. Uh, Dan, people like you that come off the market, I help people like this every single month. When you take a look at what we can do aggressively to get the property sold, you can decide if it fits your needs. Because again, you're not going to do anything unless it makes sense for you, right? Yeah. Okay. So when we meet, we'll go over the information that you need. You guys will figure out what's best for you. And then we can figure out from there if uh, you want to hire me for the job of selling the property. Uh, Six yeah. o'clock tomorrow, we'll just tentatively schedule it. I'll call in the morning just to make sure you got the email. Or oh, got the information. You, what was your name again? Uh, my name's Paul Campanero with Paul. Berkshire Hathaway. Yeah, yeah. What do you, uh, Paul, what do you charge for uh, commission? That's a great question, Dan, because there's a couple different ways we can use commission. How about this? When we meet, that'll be one of the first things that we discuss in regards to a commission that'll cause the home to sell, a commission that's uh, fair for you and fair for me, and then uh, we can figure out what that means for you. Okay? Okay. So we just, I know we've, we've had some other agents call us that told us they would do it for uh, just 1% and offer 3% to the buyer. So Yeah. Well, here's the thing. You're talking about uh, keeping the most money in your pocket. I mean, at the end of the day, that's the bottom line, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, and listen, I, as somebody who's sold my own property before, I completely respect that. So we'll take a look at exactly what it means in regards to attracting the highest paying buyers to get the highest price possible and the best buyer's agents out there in regards to marketing and advertising because we don't want to leave any stone unturned, right? I mean, you want the best buyers to come see your house, right? Well, yeah, we need the we need the best offer. Right, exactly. So that'll that'll be one of the things that we look at. And again, Dan, I completely respect that you guys aren't going to do anything unless it makes sense for you. So when I come over tomorrow at six, we'll take a look at some of that information, and then you'll get a look at how I might be able to help, and then decide there what's best for you. So I, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow at six. Okay. All right. Okay, I appreciate it. I'm going to have that package hand delivered to your house this afternoon. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that. Excellent. Take a look at that. There's some really good information there. I appreciate your time, Dan. I'll call tomorrow morning just to confirm tomorrow night at 6 still works, okay? Sounds good. Great. Then, Paul. Thanks so much, Dan. Quick power closes for prospecting. How important is it to get the most money when you decide to sell? If you felt absolutely confident you could sell your home, would you consider it? If there is an advantage to sell now versus waiting, you want to know about it, right? You have a proven plan. You sell your home in less than 60 days. Is that a problem for you? If you have an offer and it makes sense, you're going to consider it, correct? If there's new information and it causes your home to sell, you want to see it, right? What has to happen for you to put your home on the market? Power close for they already know an agent. I respect you know, you know an agent. L let me ask you an honest question. This is a big deal for $350,000, right? Exactly. H how important is it to get the property sold for the highest price possible? Exactly. That's exactly why we need to meet. You want to do Tuesday or Wednesday at 4? power close. Bob, I understand. You're not going to do anything unless it makes sense for you, right? Well, when we meet, we'll go over the information you need, and then you'll know what's best for you. You want to do Monday or Tuesday at four? The motivation script. If you could move, where would you want to go next? What would be bringing you there? How does your family feel about that? What about your job? What would have to happen for you to move? How long do you really want to wait to get there? What would be the biggest benefit of moving? What price do you really not want to go below? What happens if the home doesn't sell? If the prospect just doesn't seem interested, but there may be an opportunity for a sale later on down the road and for quarterly follow-ups, you can go for the email.
for a home value report and for putting them in your sphere of influence or your quarterly calls. And it goes a little something like this. Well, Bob, we get a lot of requests from neighbors for our free home value report. So you can keep an eye on your property value going up. What's the best email address to send that information to? Buyer lead script. Your goal is to set an appointment for a consultation. Were you looking to buy in a specific neighborhood or a more general area? Are you considering any other areas? What would be the most important features for your new home? What's the biggest benefit to move into a new home? How soon would you like to be moved into your new home? Are you working with any other agents right now? What price did you want to stay under per month on your mortgage payment? Has a lender let you know what home price you can get for that payment? Who else needs to be included to decide on the home? Did you need to sell the home you're in to buy the next one? How long is the lease for the property you're renting? The first step to get you on the right track and take a good look at all your options is to set an appointment. If we were to meet, which days would work better for you? Monday or Tuesday at four? Buyer objection handlers. Remember, no appointment, no list of homes. They don't get a list of homes unless you set that appointment. Here are some common objection handlers to we're just looking around. Uh, we're not that serious right now. Were you aware it could take anywhere from three to six months to get into a new home? Right. So my question is, would you like to be in your new home in the next three to six months? Or do you want to get serious about looking at that time? Well, in that case, let's meet Monday or Tuesday at four. If you see a home that you absolutely love, would you consider making an offer? Great. Well, then uh, let's meet Tuesday or Wednesday at four. Is it fair to say you only want to see properties that specifically meet your criteria? Exactly. Well, let's go ahead and schedule a time for you to come in. You want to do Monday or Tuesday at four? Power close. I can give you a free list of properties that exactly meets your needs. I'll share with you inside market information and strategy so you can get the best deal, regardless of who you buy from, because you're not going to do anything unless it makes sense, right? Exactly. Monday or Tuesday at four. Congratulations. You finished the program. Now let's look at three points to consider to be able to nourish your power of communication. Now that you've listened to role plays, objection handlers, actual scripts being read aloud so that you can internalize and condition yourself as a power, powerful communicator, there's three real important things to make sure that you continue on this journey and nourish your mindset, nourish your skills to speaking fluent real estate. First, how to role play effectively. Number one, stand up while role playing. This is very important to be able to mobilize and, and, and allow yourself to create and maintain that energy that you really need. Number two, focus on how you're saying the words. Delivery is critical. Content is important, but how you say things is very, very important on how you're perceived. Number three, use great energy and enthusiasm. Many times when you're prospecting, if you're prospecting over the phone, you really only have one thing. That's the sound of your voice. So manipul manipulating and, and being intentional about your energy and enthusiasm is very, very important to your infliction to be better received. Number four, use your body language to enhance your words. Now, but this, this is natural when you're talking to somebody in person because body language is the majority of your, of your communication. But when, when you're speaking over the phone, this is equally as important. Remember, you're using infliction, energy, and enthusiasm, and your, your ability to use your body language to enhance that, to really allow that to move through you, to, to allow that energy to move through you while you're standing allows you to have better infliction. Number five, always be positive and progressive. It's so easy to slip into conflict. It's so easy to be negative or to say something negatively. Always be the positive and progressive person. Remember, every po at every second, you're co-creating this experience. And at every second, they may be judging you. So being the positive and progressive person in the conversation is important for how you're being perceived. Number six, follow the scripts. 
You're role playing effectively to follow the script so that you can condition yourself. So at the moment of impact, you're saying better things. You're saying them better. You're listening carefully so that you can move through that initial resistance and move through some of those objections that you're getting. Following the scripts while you're role playing is important so that when you're in those conversations for real, you'll say something smart. You'll say something that makes sense that you've internalized through following scripts and then you'll say something better. You'll say something creative. You'll say something based on, on what they've said that's important for you to continue the conversation. So following the scripts while you're role playing is important to conditioning yourself to be a more powerful communicator. Number seven, role play motivated prospects. You're talking to people who are unmotivated often. I mean, that's just gonna happen. So role play motivated prospects so that when the real deal happens, you're able to recognize it and you're able to maneuver through some of those conversations by leveraging motivation because you're speaking to somebody who is ready to do something and may have initial resistance or may have objections, but you've role, pl you've role played that successfully. Number eight, role play initial resistance and multiple objections. Again, this is something that's gonna happen. People are going to give you the reflex no. You're going to get the most common objections. And the great news is you already know what they are. So role play them so that at the moment of impact, again, you're comfortable, you're confident moving through that conversation because you've practiced it. Number nine, and, and this is my favorite and, and maybe the most important is repeating, approving, and moving. I use the acronym RAM. You're gonna ram your way through conversations. Now, RAM is repeating. You're gonna, you're gonna say what they say. You're gonna paraphrase what they say so that they understand that you're listening. Number two, you're gonna approve. Now, approving could be great, wonderful, fantastic, but it also could be some form of acknowledgement. I understand your position. I respect that. I can appreciate you thinking that so that they understand that you're on the same side of them, even though you may not agree but you could appreciate and respect where they're coming from based on their, their, where they're getting their information or their perspective. And then finally, moving through with great questions that you're getting from the scripts. Moving through to a great question based on what they, they just said. Now, listen, this one tool, repeating, approving, and moving, could be the single most important key to your success when communicating with prospects and clients. Number 10, give com compliments on what was done well and constructively criticize on how to improve. Now, it's pretty easy to give compliments and it's natural to do so, but the, the second part of this, constructively criticizing is very, very important. You know, we're practicing to get better. There's things that we need to improve upon and don't be afraid to ask people that, to uh, tell you, what is it that I need to do better? Uh, how can I improve? because these are the things that are really gonna move us forward and elevate the quality of our communication. The second point is how to learn scripts. When we're considering how to learn scripts, the first point is uh, study the scripts every chance you get. You know, we're, we understand that we make money by what we say. So if that's the case, we make money by what we say, studying the scripts is critical. Number two, write them out as much as possible. If you're studying them, you're reading them, you're, you have them with you wherever you go, you're reading them every chance you get, write them out. Write out certain objections and maybe pick that objection and write it out 10 times in a day. Uh, write out certain scripts so that it assists you in, turn, in, in, in internalizing that script and allowing you to become a better communicator. Number three, study audio and video material of people successfully role-playing. There's plenty of stuff out there on the internet. There's plenty of stuff that people have in the office that they're sharing. Allow yourself to include that in part of the process to enhance your script study. And number four, role-play, role-play, role-play. This is the one thing that if you, if, you're, if you understand that, if I'm taking action, and I give an equal amount of importance on, on, the, uh, on how important it is to role play, then you're really gonna be able to move forward faster. You see, role play is that practice. It's just like athletes, uh, it's just like students who, who have to study. Your, your practice is what's going to make you the better communicator. And, and you really can't just read a book and, allow, and think that you're going to be uh, able to speak fluent real estate. You can't speak fluent Spanish by reading a book. You have to engage in conversations. 
And the same goes for real estate. You have to engage in conversations and be fluent in real estate so that you can be fluent in real life. The third thing is how to, how, prepare, how to prepare for lead generation. This is the third major point. So we've gone over how to role play effectively, how to learn scripts, and then finally here, how to prepare for lead generation. First, affirmations are important to warm up your mindset for great communication. There are so many things that are going to come across your mind in regards to negative thoughts or, or things that people are saying or people around you that say negative things. Things affirmations are the one mental exercise that you can do daily to empower yourself to to reinforce yourself and nourish yourself through those negative thoughts or through things that people are saying or bad calls that you having or bad experiences during the day to ensure that yes you know what my service changes lives my mindset is strong all day long my service is here to help people. And if you really believe that and you really buy into that, there's an opportunity to really enhance the power of affirmations, to enhance the power of your communication, and to really help people. Number two, role play and review scripts to get ready. This is really important to warm up. Again, another exercise for you to be able to warm up, role playing and reviewing scripts. And uh, number three, get ready with having enough phone numbers ready or prepared. Or if you're prospecting on open houses or door knocking, be prepared. Know where you're going and when you're going, how long you're going to be doing it, when you're going to stop. These are all points to make sure that you're prepared. And finally, focus. Focus on prospecting two to three hours a day. This is really important for you being able to stay in the zone, for you being able to uh, prospect effectively and efficiently so you can get the results that you're looking for. I am so glad for this opportunity be, to be able to share with you the power of communication. And I'm excited to see where you go with it. Make sure to listen to this material as much as possible and bring on other resources to be able to elevate the power of communication in your life and in with your business. I appreciate your time again, and I thank you for being able to share.